So rather than walk around while you were talking, I, 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 I'm so clever. I'm just so clever. Okay, so um, uh, this is what we did last time. So we had the first board that had the, I took the picture, I guess, before the very end, because we went up with three people under Turkey. Um, Pre-Columbian, colonial, 1800, 1865, where's my thing? And then, there we go. Um, and then there was the pre-World War One, and then the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. <coughs> Excuse me. I love this. This was so cool. And then 1965 on, and so on. All right, so that was our, that was what we did on Tuesdays last time, um, was filling in that timeline. All right, so what do we got now? Um, so they said the people are here to do evaluation, so let me skip over the goal because we always had the most trouble with that and go straight to the push-pull because that's easier. You know, now that you struggle with the goal, we'll go straight to the push-pull. So, um, huh? Well, that's fine. Okay, okay. So, uh, raise hands so I can call on you. Give me a push or a pull. So something that pushed people out of their home country or pulled them to the United States. So why they left home is the push. Why they came here instead of Chile is the pull. And then the question is, is this something that applies historically, contemporarily, or both? Dennis? It's push, right? Okay. So let me get my pen back going. And he said escaping political and religious person. Okay. Political or religious persecution. All right, now, historical, contemporary, or both? Both? Hand way up high. Okay, that's the next one. Okay, so we're going to put both historical and contemporary for escaping, escaping religious political persecution. All right, war is a push. Historical, contemporary, or both? Both. Other pushes or pulls, either one. Either. Gender inequality. Contem historical, contemporary, or both? Historical is, uh, historical means in the previous parts of the court, so historical means pre-1920s. Contemporary? How many want just contemporary? Yeah. Okay. All right, gender inequality, contemporary. Yep. Education for a pull factor. Historical, contemporary, or both? How about if I put brackets around the H? So, uh, historical, uh, eight, let's see, historical 1700s? Probably not. Historical late 1800s? Yeah, maybe so. Um, so that's why I bracketed H. So it's certainly, we could probably talk about education as a pull for the late 19th, early 20th century, in the beginnings of um, the educational system here in the United States, but certainly much more so um, today. Come on. Push. Okay, limited job opportunities for a push, and um, I'm just going to put job opportunities rather than put an adjective on it for a pull. Limited job opportunities as a push, historical, contemporary, or both? Both. Job opportunities in the U.S., historical, contemporary, or both? Both. Definitely, that's something we talked about in both periods. Finding a mate, push or pull? <laughs> Finding a mate, push or pull? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave home because I can't find anybody to partner up with at home. Uh, historical, contemporary, or both? Any case in which it might be also historical? Um, Didn't we have an awful lot of people who are Irish on the board? No? No? Okay. So contemporary, we, nobody's really wanting to put that on historical? Okay. Uh, and then pull, so finding a mate, and then come to the U.S. as opposed to someplace else. We're better here than Iceland. <laughs> no? What did I just step into? I have no idea. Not a clue. I don't want to know. I have no idea what I just stepped into. Whew. Okay, moving on. Uh, is that a historical, contemporary, or both reason to come to the United States as opposed to someplace else? Did people come to the United States in the 19th century because their goal was to find a mate? No. All right. What else? Anything else? Yeah, wait, hi. All right. So a community of folks already here, they call that chain migration. Good. Historical, contemporary, or both? Both. Good. What else? Uh, Peter, did you already have one? No. Okay. All right. Famine uh, slash natural disasters. Historical, contemporary, or both? All right. Um, Christy, right? Okay. Possibilities of social mobility. So less of a strict class structure. Historical, contemporary, or both? Both. The more things change. Yeah. Running from the law. That's a push, yeah? Illegal behavior. I assume, right? I mean, you could be running from the law. I would assume that running from the law is not for illegal behaviors under political persecution. Yeah, okay. So uh, historical, contemporary, or both? Probably both. Although it'd be harder today to get in, um, be difficult to get legal status here uh, today if you were running from the law. Anything else you want me to put on the list? Yep. Okay. So the having a refugee system that takes in people who are political and religious refugees and has we have that whole asylum status, right? So you can have, you can be an asylee. Um, we have a whole system set up to take in political uh, and religious those are persecuted. Historical, contemporary, or both? That's contemporary because because the, the system didn't exist in the nineteenth century. Sam. Okay. So political freedoms, the Bill of Rights. Historical, contemporary, or both? Both. Okay, I'm out of space. Oh, I was out of space. M M Maria. Full. Here we go. Living standards. Historical, contemporary, or both? Good. All right. Okay, let me go to the next page because I'm out of space. What about, huh? Cheap land is a poll. You want me to throw cheap land in here? Okay. Cheap land. That's, yeah, I don't even have story. At least in the Bay Area, that's definitely a story. <laughs> 
behavioral assumptions. What do we have to, what sort of assumptions do we need to make in order to tell a story about people migrating in response to these push and pull factors? So what else has to be true in order for somebody to respond to a push or a pull factor, leave home and wind up in the United States? Information has to flow. Historical, contemporary, or both? Both. So they have to be information flows. When, in which situation, historical or contemporary, are those information flows cheaper to get? When is it cheaper to get information, now or then? Now, okay. So information has to flow, but it's less of a binding constraint now than it was in the past, because it's cheaper for information to flow. The internet, cell phones, all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So all the hope and the wish in the world isn't gonna get you someplace if you can't get plane fare together, or boat fare. So having enough money to go, is that something that we need to consider historically, contemporarily, or both? Both. Okay. And interestingly, there we are. Interestingly, we can talk about, I mean, that's something that we could spend a lot more time than we have talking about, right? Because in the early period, I don't know if I talked about it at all, um, in terms of people apprenticing themselves as a way of getting, we talked about, no, because I skipped colonial period. So we could have talked about indentured servitude, which is a way of, of apprenticing yourself in order to get passage over here. And now, with the way that the immigration laws are set up, if you're not part of a family chain migration, you need a, a boatload of cash um, in order to, to be in one of those preferred categories. Okay, I got um, one more. Who has not had a chance? Yeah. Legal ability to move. Both in terms of leaving and arriving. So is this, is this true historically, contemporarily, or both? Both. However, with different, different differences, right? So when we talk about immigration in the 1800s, before the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, there was no legal inability to move here. Right? Anybody who wanted to come could come. And then we started in 1882 putting in restrictions. Right? The legal ability to leave, that's going to get back to, in some cases, the religious and political persecution uh, and, and whatever the other constraints are in that country. We could populate this list further, but you guys have a job to do, which is to fill out evaluations. Um, the evaluations, they have a little thing they're going to use. The evaluations are important. Please do not leave until you do it. The evaluations are used uh, for my reviews, and I get reviewed every three years. Um, and I have a review coming up next year. Uh, and they're used also for the GSIs in terms of not only GSI awards, but whether or not they get jobs again. Um, so these things are important and are used not only for jobs here, but for subsequent employment. So when Eric goes on the job market in a few years, his future employers will read the comments you write in your reviews today. Um, all right, that's what I got for today. They're going to start. I got to pack up. I'll see you once. And I have office hours till five.